Hello and good morning guys and welcome to Milau. Uh, this is probably going to be the first and last time I ever properly attempt this, but I want to make a short uh, series of videos uh, of me building a city uh, and the towns on, on this new map that I just the other day uploaded to the workshop. It's, it's finally done, I've spent around a month on it, hundreds of hours probably already on the map. And now I want to build on it, so you can check out the Steam Workshop. Uh, there's going to be links in the description. Uh, of course, Milau uh, is a small town in the southern France, and it's very, very famous for the huge Milau Viaduct, uh, which is this bridge here. Uh, yeah. So uh, I guess we should go over it a little bit first. Like this is the area where you sort of want, you have the best opportunity to build a city or a town. Uh, this is where the real life town of Milau is, situated down in this valley, uh, or in this river bend here on the, the confluence. But um, yeah, and it's pretty well set up to start, I think, but this is not where I want to start building today. Uh, I want to start building on the outskirts of the map, uh, building like small villages along the rail line. Like, so we'll be following this rail line, rail, line, rail line down here. And we'll be starting off by uh, building a town in this valley here, very near the map edge. For this, I'm gonna need 8 to 1 tiles mod, so I'm gonna unlock the tiles. Um, another thing I want to do before we start is I want to replace the pillars of the viaduct and show you how, it, how to do that, because. Uh, I have provided like extra, uh, like better pillars if you're using the Bridges and Piers DLC, which I'm going to be using. So these pillars here are the ones that come with the map. They are uh, made out of vanilla pillars and they look fine, uh, but they have some problems. Like for example, I had to I had to stack them double high here and and uh, and uh, do some weird stuff uh, because they were literally not high enough. I needed to sort of force the terrain to go down, but so basically how I would do this, I would use move it to select all these pillars here. Selecting buildings only because most pillars are buildings and I would delete them. Uh, now we have the option to maybe delete these foundations also, but I think we'll just keep them. Like they're a nice remnant, like a, a, a tells the history of a place. Um, and. Now I would go in and import the move it export. The move it export file is available on uh, uh, what's it called, uh, allbuilds.org, uh, and um, you can download it from there. There's probably going to be a link in the description. If if not, there's a link on the map uh, site. So I'm going to select Milau Viaduct, uh, um, BP pillars, bridges and piers, and press restore, like that. Voila. And we have the better pillars in, and they look much better. They look more realistic. They're they're sort of a brighter color, just like the real life uh, ones. So, okay, no more delay. Let's let's start building. Uh, this is going to be probably until I figure this out heavily time lapsed. Um, yeah, so I guess settle in, and uh, I'll see you on the other side. So this is strange. Um, I'm not very used to uh, recording voiceovers, but that's that's what's happening right now anyway. Uh, I figured it's way too long a time lapse to just leave you guys with the Radio Mars uh, radio. So um, the first thing I'm doing here, like as you can see, is uh, I'm putting in a train station. Uh, I'm using the uh, the content creator pack by Jez for the sort of old rustic looking train station and and now I had a go at importing a roundabout oh my god that uh, that didn't turn out very well I have made these move it exports of roundabouts with bike lanes and I was gonna see if it would work but it seems like uh, since some IMT update they they might have sort of stopped working as intended so I'll have to move on to the just doing an intersection instead uh, I 
this is very very uncomfortable i don't know how this uh, like me talking over the video is gonna turn out because uh, eventually i start i know uh, from the recording i know that i start doing just random stuff like left right and center and uh, it's it's going to be very interesting uh, it might not make any sense but i have a few like uh, topics to talk about uh, while i'm dragging out the road network that so uh, so like let's talk about some more generic things about this 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 build i guess um uh, let's start start talking about names and the setting or the theme of this place like the map is obviously very much french i don't necessarily want this build to be french or I want to take inspiration from like the real locations, but I, I, I want to keep it a bit more generic so we can be more flexible and don't have to sort of... Uh, we're not building Milao one-to-one, -one. that's that's the main point, so... Um, if you guys have any suggestions uh, on, on names in general for districts and the city itself, like, uh, please leave them in the comments, I'd love to hear. Uh, Oh, here I'm adding the pedestrian bridge over the river. Um, I'm using the Bridges and Piers uh, pedestrian bridge. Uh, like, it has this very nice arch underneath it. I like some kind of iron metal arch structure, and uh, that's nice. It sort of hints at that I plan to have the town... Uh, continue at least a little bit on the other side of the river or the stream but um, yeah and uh, here I go and do uh, some up upgrading of the networks of like of the main road bridge I don't know I don't think any of this actually stays I change it back eventually but I'm doing some intersection marking tool work and some node controller work to make it uh, look nice. I'm using the old version of the node controller. Uh, I really, really tried using the new one. I really tried before this. I just can't. It it doesn't have. It doesn't have the options. It doesn't have the same options. It's like li it's limited uh, for me anyway. Like I know what I can do with this one. I I feel very very limited using the new node controller. It's very good for just doing intersections, but I want to use it on rail lines. I want to use it. To maybe create weird stuff out of monorail tracks also but it's it's just not working for me so this is why and here i created like this small path along the river next to a rail line uh, i'm not sure it's necessary but it like adds an interesting bit of detail to that part of the town and uh, the first building other than the train station is going to be the elementary school um, I don't want to overdo it with services and like buildings in general. Uh, like this is going to be a small town. I would prefer it if people actually like commuted into the main town for high school and university and and stuff like that. Um, so it's so it's sort of so we get use out of that train station. I don't. I'm not actually sure it's going to work that great for city skylines though. But but uh, that's the idea anyway. Um, I want to have this be a very small and uh, sleepy sort of residential uh, village, basically. Like the most, the most common building will be uh, uh, low density residential buildings. So here I'm dragging out a road that goes like sort of awkwardly outside of the sort of the confines that we had already with the, the road network. Uh, I imagine this part of the, the town or the village is much more newer, like, or a newer development. And when I say newer, I mean, like, maybe it was developed in the 60s or something like that. So, uh, that that part would have, like, uh, been added on top of the already existing sort of small town layout uh, when there was need for more housing, so... Oh, and now I'm doing something exciting. I'm doing cul-de-sacs on, on these roads here. My preferred way to do it is just to have a very thin road uh, end with a normal, like, thicker road. And uh, then just using move it to wiggle them around till you get this round shape. And uh, 
Then I'm using a node control. You can use TMP as well, together with the hide, hide crossings or hide crosswalks mod uh, to sort of delete the, the crosswalks, which are kind of unnecessary, if, like for the cul-de-sac, I think. Uh, cul-de-sac's not necessarily super French, not su super necessarily very old either. Like it feels like uh, a relatively modern invention, like from America, but I, I don't know. I just like the way it ends. Um, sort of adds detail to this otherwise kind of under detailed small villages uh, and here are some more services we're getting in the, the fire station or maybe not yet yeah it'll probably be a while but um, what do you guys think about the visual settings I've got going uh, I I'm actually playing with a very uh, relatively vanilla uh, graphic setup right now I'm just using render it to do a few change like a few minor changes but this is pretty much uh, as vanilla as it gets I'm using the vanilla temperate uh, map theme and the vanilla European LUT the the lookup table for the color correction uh, so uh, I don't know I I'm kind of I this was the sort of setting I used for making the map so I'm very sort of familiar with feels like home but I'm, I'm also very wary like some people might think it looks way too yellow and weird but uh, I'm also I've been playing around with render it and like getting some other settings in there so we might um, experiment a little bit back and forth oh now oh this is exciting this is the first time it's not kind of the first time I actually place one of these uh, uh, football fields uh, with intention of actually having it like be a part of the town and like you know continuing a build or whatever like yeah I've been so excited to use these by uh, Bad Peanut from the sports venues uh, uh, CCP I've been making so many maps and just not playing the game for a long time so I haven't really gotten the time to use them so it's it feels really good to actually put them in and they're gonna make small towns like this like just so much better and big towns as well like we're, we're gonna we're gonna make sure that every sort of town of this size or larger uh, has a football field uh, um, football is of course very generic European um, so <laughs> uh, here you can see me working a little bit with the old node controller the, with the old node, node controller the, the node controller I use uh, it's it's really not that hard to use it to be honest it works really well uh, it's it's just that it has a few more clicks to do the more basic stuff which I'm fine with but um, I get it that that many others would be like sort of don't see the point when you can just like one click uh, a lot of a lot of the simpler things in the, the new node controller the new node controller renewal that is ah and here is when I figured out yeah I can't I don't want to put in the serve all the services yet so I just put them on the edge of the map and uh, have them go away. We'll, we'll put in the services relatively soon. I, I definitely don't want to uh, uh, wait too long with building like a proper sewage treatment plant and like power station. It's probably going to be like one or two episodes in uh, uh, at this rate, uh, I think. And now it seems like I'm, yeah, I'm placing some, some of the more like uh, assets to sort of form the core of this village. There's a police station, a post office, a medical clinic. clinic. Uh, I'm trying to get some commercial buildings in as well and some parking lots. Uh, I find it easier to start doing this and then sort of add... Uh, how do you say it? Like add the residential afterwards. Uh, which is another good point, something... Uh, I, I think I talk about this a little bit in the in the post uh, in the post time warp uh, sort of live play in the end. But I'm using realistic population mod for like the first time ever. I don't think I've ever actually used it quite like this before. Anyway, uh, it's been a very long time anyway. But that's gonna change how I build cities a lot as well. It's gonna make uh, like uh, me have to uh, me have to it's gonna make yeah uh, it's gonna force me to to make like large 
low density residential areas uh, and and like sort of small dense commercial cores which at least in theory if if we can get the sort of balance right i think that's going to be really fun and and like really great uh, a really great thing kind of excited like i've always been bothered a little bit by how city scanners forces you to have like way more industry way more uh like assets that is like way more industrial assets commercial assets and office assets um it, it, it like feels unproportional that's that's the point um, i love to spread these out i like to put like small commercial buildings on corners in residential areas and stuff like that but i don't want to like be forced to do an entire avenue of commercial just because i have a large residential area and uh, i think the sort of uh, the residential demand bar is like at max for the whole video which sort of gives an idea gives us the idea that yeah this might work this might work uh, for this part here oh i remember i wanted to do a sort of uh, rail side industrial area and i'll i'll be like sort of testing a lot of assets back and forth this isn't the final one either um i'll get back to that in a bit i think i eventually um end up choosing a more sort of farming um a more farm related industrial asset which i think fits the vibe of this town a lot better it, it being basically a farming village um, so some food processing some farm storage uh, industry I think works better. These are the Avanya Industrial Evolution uh, CCP buildings, by the way, which uh, I haven't, also haven't really gotten a chance to use properly since they <laughs> since they arrived. So I'm super excited to use that, especially like on the sort of the proper industrial areas and the outskirts of town. So yeah, there's a lot of me uh, just moving around nodes and segments. Uh, I'm sorry about that. I, I'm still kind of new to this. I, I, I don't know. New to making like content that makes makes sense. That's good. But I really want to make a, a nice series out of this. I, I really want to make a my best attempt at, at doing something that's that's nice to follow along with and, and watch. And like, if you guys have any questions or comments in general, like uh, I read all the comments and I'd love to like hear your input and what you think about this and like like how. How we could improve like naming ideas as i said before like naming ideas anything anything you can come up with that you feel like is relevant i i'm super excited to hear hear your thoughts about this i haven't shared this with anybody by the way i have nobody knows that i this is finally the the finally the time for more than uh, more than just a an odd video here and there so and uh Oh, it's gonna be so exciting. Um, I have a lot of time these next couple of weeks, I think. Uh, uh, at least I, I want to make a lot of time for this, so hopefully I can churn these videos out rather quickly for you guys. Uh, that would be the ideal. here the residential areas are starting to take shape like this part is i didn't know if i was going to zone i might still do zoning in the larger towns or like in the in the main village or main village in the main city eventually like I, i'll probably use zoning at some point i i don't think uh, i've abandoned zoning but in this village i didn't zone a single building and i think it's i think it was a pretty good uh experiment like i was afraid that would take a lot longer but it's really not that bad you just need to decide what kind of assets to use and like just go go about it just put on good sort of playlist or something and just place down buildings uh, this is what makes this town like really look good i think like it makes it really complete uh, i'm trying to use the sort of hedges of the buildings the built-in hedges as much as i can to sort of create um uh, realistic lots in a way 
without having to add a lot of extra props and details. I, I could do that, but I don't really do that because I feel like if, if, if we go down that rabbit hole, we could we could get stuck uh, uh, way longer. This took this build took around two hours, like less than two hours. It's a pretty quick for, for me, like anyway, I don't know. You, you guys could probably put this together in, in, uh, in 50 minutes or something, but I, I was positively surprised how quick it, uh, it all sort of came together, so. But maybe zoning in the future, quite possibly. Um, yes, another thing I've noticed myself, and I kind of know, and also I get a lot of uh, comments about that, is like the sound quality. Uh, I I tend to sometimes talk very uh, far away from a microphone and very be very quiet, and uh, and sometimes I I click like uh, the mouse like crazy, and uh, it gets picked up by the microphone a lot, uh, like especially in the live play. Uh, I don't know if you guys have any good suggestions on how to avoid, like, sort of how to improve these things. Uh, uh, maybe more sort of towards the, the content, fellow content creators out there, but I'm sure somebody has some good ideas about, about this. I want to improve, if that's the point. I have, I have a, um, I know it doesn't seem like that all the time, but I want to, I want to get better. Want to get good. Yeah, I was talking about the visual settings a, a while back. I don't remember if I said something about it, but uh, let me let me know if you guys want like a video tutorial on on how to set up uh, the graphics. I've, I've like uh, I've tried to do it as simple as possible, as plug and play as possible, as vanilla as possible for anybody who wants to play this map. But, uh, I mean, I could still probably uh, sort of add my... Uh, there's plenty of other people who like made really, really good uh, graphics, uh, graphics setup videos. Like, uh, notably, Gashes Stranger has, uh, has probably the best video uh, of this right now. How to do extremely realistic city skylines graphics, but I feel like sometimes maybe like there could be maybe I could make a video on how to make them look decent but very simple, like sort of a vanilla plus or a, uh, without making things too complicated. Um, in a way, like how how to use like one or two mods only uh, to to achieve a good looking aesthetic. I don't know. Let me know, let me know if you uh, if this is something you're interested in. So I also want to talk a little bit about this map. This map was uh, released uh, a few days ago uh, when I'm recording this uh, to the workshop, so you can get it. There's going to be links everywhere, basically, so you can just pick it up. Um, it's called Milau, and uh, it's a really interesting map and I think it's a really really good map for certain builds as well because I've been uh, sort of the, the thing that I see with it that is really really promising for a, a build like this is that it limits uh, the scope very very naturally like there's plenty of uh, geography and and topo topographic features that sort of force you to make a, a city that doesn't you know, but that isn't absolutely massive. Like, it forces you to create something that's uh, um, of a sane human scale, you know. Like, um, this is something I think a lot about, like, when making maps and, 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 like, in general, building this game. Because even though everybody wants to build New York, you know, everybody wants to build San Francisco or some massive city somewhere, it's very, very hard or... I mean, I would say practically impossible to make that big cities in um, in this game because the limits, uh, the time, the time and effort it will take. Um, so I'm focusing more on like creating natural ways to limit. So so you can build something that you really like and it still feels big and uh, and and sort of epic, but without but without sort of all the problems of having it. 
just balloon out of proportion. Uh, so, I don't know. I mean, I haven't tried it yet. I'm trying it right now, but I think this map has a really good uh, sort of start uh, if, if you want to build something that, that, that feels complete after just like just a few sessions. I mean, you can just continuously add on and add on uh, up into the hillsides and stuff like that. So I, I, I for sure know that I'm excited and I guess I will be the guinea pig in, in a way as well, just testing and see if it, seeing if it works for real. So um, yeah, another thing I've been thinking about a little bit is uh, wouldn't it be fun to do live streams? On this map because then I could sort of use live streams as sort of even longer content to to create um, like you know like tying up loose ends and fixing stuff uh, I think that would be really fun to do in live streams in live stream form format uh, let me know what you think about that I mean I already uh, do live streams uh, over at twitch but I I would keep this as a YouTube live stream thing because this this is going to be a YouTube series like um, Twitch live streams they they have a, a VOD but it doesn't stay up for uh, for very long like a week or two maybe um, so it wouldn't make sense to like I would lose that sort of that part of the process I don't I don't want to I don't want to build anything on this map without showing it like I want to. Like I might cut out some stuff that 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 gets too repetitive and boring, but I don't want to. I don't want to rob you guys of of like the sort of process and like seeing what kind of stuff sometimes goes into it. Like I feel like that 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 would be uh, disingenuous to uh, uh, to not show like everything, uh, which is one of the biggest reasons why I've been putting this off for so long because I, I I'm very. I have a hard time sort of it, it gives me like extreme anxiety trying to uh, trying to record while playing this this game because it's it takes so long sometimes it feels like it takes so long some things just take forever and I, I guess this this series will be a way, way for me to uh, to sort of try to deal with that and and I guess uh, grow uh, like like yeah yeah, personal growth. Yeah, that's basically what I'm doing this for. I I don't I don't care if this this is gonna do well or bad. Like I'm gonna do this regardless. So so this thing is happening. You can't stop it. <laughs> I mean, I can stop it. I could stop it if for other reasons, but I'm not stopping it because uh, because it's gonna do bad or something like that. This is gonna be uh, going, and hopefully I can complete some kind of some kind of town. Or feel like we can hopefully we can finish it before City Skylines 2. I really want that, so I can focus some on PC upgrades and stuff like that later. But this thing is happening. You cannot stop me. <laughs> ah, yeah. And now is when I start thinking about oh, but that other side of the river. How are we gonna do that? Ah, you know what? We'll just redo this bridge again. Like make it take it back. And uh, we're soon coming into the segment of the video where it's like, it's it's a bit heavy on the IMT. Uh, I preferably maybe 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 IMT would be one of those things we could do in live streams, or maybe IMT could be something to um, to to even do off stream. But uh, well, at least this is the first video. This is the pilot, I guess. So you guys you guys get the IMT work. Get get ready. <laughs> It does turn out very good though, like a very very simple inter intersection, but it does turn out pretty good, so. I've already asked this, but if you you guys like see me do anything weird, like ask questions like all the time. I I play the game very quick sometimes and now I'm also uh, time lapsing it, right? I'm, I'm I, it's it's all going very quick, so I, I definitely like want to know if there's something you wonder and and then maybe I can help uh, it's much easier to uh, I, I don't know I think the problem is I've played this game for so much and so long that 
I have a hard, I don't have intuitive understanding of like what is, what is weird and what is hard. I just play the game and uh, then, uh, you know, the sort of the questions appear later. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, the IMT part. Yeah, so this is this is basically me just sort of moving the points where the IMT lines connect because they. Um, for some roads, vanilla roads, they don't actually connect with the sort of vanilla lines, so... Uh, I do something like... I make it decent, but I don't care so much about making it perfect, but... But I, I like the idea of adding these extra lanes for this intersection, because it kind of makes... Um, this is probably going to be still a relatively high traffic junction and uh, now with the town as well like we're just gonna we might we might see some problems at some point eventually so it's a good thing to at least add the, the turning lanes uh, which is what we're doing two lanes in and one lane out as a general rule of thumb. Uh, I don't know if it's necessary, to be honest. But at this, uh, when I did this, when I built this, I was just like, yeah, it's 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 already starting, I have to do it, so. Uh, it, it becomes kind of, uh, like, weirdly sort of uh, comforting just doing IMT stuff, like crazy, like these islands. Just watch that list of lines grow bigger. Um, it's very... It can be pretty frustrating finding the right thing and eventually it gets very complicated, but... I I can't say that I dislike it. it it's, it's something that you can get, really get sucked into it. Uh, and do it for a very long time sometimes. But this is... Yeah. This is probably why uh, you shouldn't overdo it. Uh, or should try to keep it... Uh, uh, to the same amount because otherwise otherwise we, we might end up with uh, one hour videos of, of just doing uh, uh, like an interchange marking or something this video is probably around the longest length I want to do these uh, I would prefer to be able to push it down to around 20 to 30 minutes uh, uh, I need to figure out how though first I, I I'm very bad at cutting out stuff and I don't feel like there's a lot that I could have cut out for this build maybe that's one of those experience things I, I'm hoping for like sort of experience to emerge out of this um, it's also one of those things that really uh, makes me sort of uh, anxious I guess about like cutting in a video you recorded like it, it easily starts taking much much more time and I I'd prefer making these relatively quickly, like, or figuring out a way to make them not low effort or anything, but, like, how to do this quickly. That's that's the sort of what I want to do, and because I know that if I can make them quicker, I'm going to have more fun, and I'm going to sort of, you know, like, just move on, and it's going to steamroll into a, into a, just, a, just a great time for everybody. I don't want to get like bogged down uh, too much in, in editing so but the goal the goal is definitely shorter videos uh, this is the goal now I'm getting back to the town with these buildings uh, and I'm thinking maybe I should have like maybe I should have like some more office assets in here somewhere. And I'm trying to squeeze in an office building between the post office and the police station. It kind of works. It's not honestly, it's not that great, but it's fine. And I think around now is the time when I uh, realize that we should probably do a farming. Uh, yeah, exactly. We should probably do a farming industry 
here. There's two benefits of that. Farming industry doesn't cause uh, any pollution, so we can have it close to residential buildings. It doesn't cause any ground pollution that will make people sick. But it also, uh, I mean, makes sense. You just, you have a farming town, you should probably have farming industry. We don't have to have them out in the middle of the fields every time, so. Oh. But before we finish that industry, industrial area, that industrial street, we should say, or like even the, just that industrial lot, I decided to go and put buildings or put houses on the other side of the river, so that's what's going on here. Um, you can sort these buildings by uh, like size, and many times I sort them by two, uh, two tiles wide and uh, two tiles, uh, uh, sometimes two tiles long as well, like deep. Uh, that lets you put more buildings in and I think, I think the two by two buildings are like the best you can, you can do. Uh, like th those are the most y useful uh, buildings in general. Um, the style of this is of course like European suburbia by Avania, these buildings, but and it's not a very French style. Uh, I don't know if I if I said that. I know it's a not it's a very inaccurate style for a French build, especially a southern French build. Uh, so that's also like a huge reason reason why we're not actually attempting to make Milao one to one. We're we're making something something more generic, something more European generic if that makes any sense. Uh, but we're definitely going to take inspirations from from southern France and 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 take ideas and put and like mismatch it together and 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 see what sort of ends up coming out of it. Ah, here is when I started playing around with the, with the tiny playgrounds and the tiny parks. Those assets that have like different uh, sub meshes you can switch between. Uh, this is such a game changer kind of for uh, for builds like this because a lot of the the normal parks are just too big uh, for neighborhoods like this but like that small park with gazebo like just fits perfect uh, and uh, I'm probably gonna spam these everywhere all over so uh, yes here using node controller to make the bridge a little bit thinner felt like a little bit too wide for just that neighborhood um, like in in the lore of this town maybe this bridge was the old main bridge actually so that would explain why it's relatively wide uh, for just being a pedestrian path but I think just making it a bit smaller was a good choice uh, and I was playing around with some other settings in node controller because I, this is this is the stuff I do um, I, 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 I admire your patience if you've sort of you've uh, stood stood out you've uh, held out this far this far into this video but um, yeah um, the only service that we have in this town so far is a water tower um, I think that's the way it's gonna stay I was thinking about maybe adding wind turbines somewhere but uh, we'll, we'll have to see it's probably gonna be more of a wind park kind of sort of a and I'll probably have to actually research that a little bit like how do wind parks work in, in in this sort of topography because I don't think you should place wind turbines down in the valley with that said I think in some cases some people would do and uh, of course the wind turbines we have in city skylines I mean it's not an of course but the wind turbines we have in city skylines are extremely small compared to modern wind turbines uh, uh, a modern wind turbine can like have a total height of like 200 meters or like almost 600 feet uh, that's counting the blades uh, they can be extremely tall uh, even on land uh, and I think the city skylines wind turbines are just way too small for for that so maybe we should use them more as older smaller scale wind turbines like for example like this farmer decides they want to put up a wind turbine to to supply their own farm's need and then they just have one unit um, maybe that's something we could do also so 
Ah, here is the farming industry, yes. I basically redid the roads a little bit so that it would make more sense. It's like kind of like a dead end that goes into this factory. I, I'd imagine it's some kind of food factory, some kind of small... I mean, if it was France, maybe it would be cheese. It's probably not cheese, it's probably grain. We kind of have the silos. Uh, I could have used the Industries DLC silos, actually. Um, I mean, it's not too late, it's not too late. Uh, and I eventually find a Avanya... Uh, industrial evolution building that I like. It's it's the one without the chimney and I figure if I place two of them uh, sort of next to each other it's gonna look like a longer warehouse, like a longer old uh, old school railroad warehouse and uh, then I just uh, I think I delete or I think I reset it a few times with move it till I get the right color I think that that's a, such a useful uh, way to use that pack, just putting the buildings together and um, and creating longer buildings uh, like we did there. Uh, also, we don't need to actually have them facing the road to get road connections. Sometimes, I mean, I haven't tested this, but uh, for for this particular location, this particular map, but. Or that location specifically, but it should work. Generally, you can have uh, them go uh, sort of side, uh, parallel with the road, the, the buildings, and they will connect as long as they're close enough. Here, I'm just detailing up and creating a sort of a dead end road that goes up the hillside. I feel like that part of this of the town needed some detail, something to sort of cap it off. Um, Sort of, that makes this town and the bridges a sort of focal point for the, the surrounding area. Uh, I might go back here and detail the countryside more later, but like there's going to be like some small farms and stuff like that. And I was playing around with the idea of having a farm up here, but I don't think it worked super great with how it messed up the terrain. So I just deleted it for now and created a. Uh, it's sort of a more industrial looking farm along the road. Um, indu industrial looking farm. It's kind of kind of inspired by some places I've seen like driving around uh, here in Sweden, I think. Yeah. Like a place where you have easy access for trucks. To go and drop off your grain or pick up your stuff. It could be a even a place where we just sell, uh, sell, sell animal f food, animal feed, uh, stuff like that. I think that's that's decent. That's decent enough. I play around with the idea of maybe having a uh, farm out on this road as well, but eventually I just leave a road as a dead end uh, after I make it fit into the terrain a little bit better. It uh, created a, a bit too many cliff faces uh, the way I dragged it out initially, so uh, that's what's happening right now. And with that said, we are coming to the end of the time lapse. There's only about like one or two minutes left. Uh, doing some more trees. I found that doing trees along the roads uh, using forest brush sometimes just creates this very nice looking uh, 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 tree lined road effect almost. Uh, but it's more random, but I, I don't know, I don't know. And I think this is the final IMT, the final IMT. And of course, I almost forgot, like, some of these roads definitely should be tree-lined. So that's like one of the last things I up, up, upgrade, I suppose. Uh, not all of them, uh, but definitely some of them. Uh, I usually go more crazy with tree-lined roads, but... Uh, yeah. 
and I also switch out for some better looking trees. In the live play after um, this time lapse, I, I go through and show you how to bob, uh, do a global replace in bob to switch out with the trees in the buildings for better ones. So, uh, I mean, I guess stay tuned for, for that part. It's coming up in like uh, about a minute now. After me just placing some of the last freestanding trees here, sometimes in the middle of buildings, just using that anarchy for uh, for good effect. Adding some fences. I didn't talk about the fences. Uh, add some fen fences towards the rail line to make it uh, a little bit more safe, uh, I suppose. Yeah. Some fence around the industry makes sense. Makes sense to add a fence. That can be a bumper sticker. I'm not sure bumper sticker for what, but. I'm really happy with this small town, by the way, like, and I'm super excited to do the next one. Uh, I think the next video will be another town on this line. It just feels logical, so. Uh, on this rail line and um, yeah, and we continue from there towards the, the main town. Uh, in a few seconds you will see a before and after shot. If we can transition to that. There we go. Oh, that's nice. So that was hopefully a uh, not too crazy time lapse. Um, I might cut out some parts of it. It took around two hours to build this, um, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. Like it's not, it's not the best. Ever, but with the amount of time and like sort of very limited plans and ideas I had going into it, I think I'm, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Um, but uh, before uh, we end like the video, I want to talk about like a little bit about the plans, like what, what is the next step. Uh, it would feel very logical to, to continue the city or the, the map or the build by adding more towns along the rail down in the valley like i feel like this location here could definitely uh, do with a small town that sort of snakes up along the of the hills maybe even we already have a roundabout for it so uh, and uh, we might connect up this road here somewhere uh with like may make it like another village basically um i think that would be very cool we could continue up under the bridge I don't think there's gonna be like any towns here but uh, maybe the next build after that could be this area here, which is going to be like in the outskirts of a town proper and uh, I think like a large industrial area and like uh, utilities and stuff like that like they're, they're, it would make sense to have like a sewage treatment plant a proper sewage treatment plant and uh, maybe power plants and uh, some uh, some rail freight even um, I mean, currently our current solution for uh, the power and uh, the utilities is uh, is just putting them on the map edge, but that's only temporary. Please, please don't mind that too much. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's two more things I want to do before we end the video, and it is to get trains coming in here. Uh, I am. Uh, I'm gonna show you guys a trick that I really like to use when it comes to trains. I'm gonna basically we have one train station right now and yeah okay we have uh, we could have like intercity trains allowed intercity trains but I'm gonna turn that off actually and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a train line at the station and then go all the way to the map edge here and as you can see you can actually connect up the map edge um, with the train line, it's kind of weird. If you can, if your camera can reach that far, you can you can connect it up, and then we can create a full line like that. Um, and we should have trains starting to go here. And 
that will create sort of scheduled train traffic to the outside, which I think is a really good uh, alternative to uh, just having random trains, just randomly, trains randomly spawn. Uh, since this is a French map, let's just go ahead and put the TGV, uh, TGV uh, already on it. It's I know it's completely bonkers, but let's let's pretend. Um, can keep the color as is. The only thing you need to remember uh, doing this trick is uh, you need to have um, at least one train station somewhere on the map that is connected to the tracks because the train station actually acts as a depot uh, for the trains so you need somewhere to spawn the trains uh, if you don't if you just have sort of uh, in most cases that's fine but if you only have like uh, custom train stations with train station tracks like just placed on the ground uh, you won't get any train spawn spawning if you if you do it this way uh, there's no one coming in yet I, I hope to see that like I'm not gonna hang around and wait for it but I assume everything's gonna work and if it doesn't uh, you know what it's just troubleshooting uh, the city is very small and very slow to grow uh, so far we are playing with realistic population as well uh, which I might have mentioned in the in the talk over in the time-lapse uh, but uh, that's gonna that's gonna be new for me I've never really played with realistic population before or I have but it was a way long time ago so it's gonna be interesting to see. Uh, I, I like the prosp the idea of it that we have like almost endless residential demand with unlimit uh, with uh, realistic population. So, or at least by default. So, we can really make a large sort of low low rise sprawl. Uh, I, I like that. Uh, see if it works out though. <laughs> uh, we have. No passengers so far, but I mean, uh, if it doesn't work, um, I'm gonna have to just uh, figure that out later. Another thing I want to touch on and uh, is like you can see, like there's a lot of vanilla trees in these buildings, the Avanya buildings we used, uh, because they the pack was like basically before we had better trees available. So I would go in and use Bob to replace them globally. Um, I'll show it like on some buildings and uh, and uh, then you get the idea. Maybe we could do it glo Maybe I mean it's since it's global actually trees. Uh, now I just have to remember I don't think I quite remember how how the global or placed work to be honest. All trees in this type in all buildings. Yeah that's the global or place. Okay. I mean, let's try it. Okay, so we have a small bush. I already know that the small bush should be like the wild hedge. Shout out to Overcharge Egg. Uh, the tree two variant. This is that tree. I'm gonna try to keep it as uh, like similar scale as possible, uh, so it just works. I think green tree is. I mean, green tree is a classic, so. We just use that tree variant here, slightly larger. Maybe we'll use the sugar pine, the sugar, sugar maple, sugar pine. Okay. Uh, and you see, and since this is global, it replaces in all buildings. So you can see we instantly actually got quite a um, quite a change across the map. Like I can hardly find any more of the vanilla trees to be honest. There's one. Uh, these are a little bit more unusual trees. I don't know. Like, maybe we could actually replace them with some kind of... Uh, oh, silver birch. I haven't used that one yet. Okay. Maybe we can replace them with, like, pear trees or, like, fruit trees. Like, I w that's a nice way to sort of spruce up a residential garden, maybe. Like, have occasional pear tree here and there. The alder tree. Alder tree is pretty l tall. Maybe the generic pine is a good alternative. I'm trying to mix it up as much as possible to... Oh, Eastern Cottonwood could also do, actually. Let's do Eastern Cottonwood. I like that. Because um, I don't really place it so many in so many other situations, so... Here we can use the, the generic pine. I might, I might have said generic palm before, but... 
meant for generic pine. You can see there's some pear trees here. Like just, it's nice. I like that. Um, and to be honest, I I didn't expect that to be so quick, but I can't see any any sort of uh, of those old school really kind of meh looking trees anymore. So we'll probably use Bob quite a bit more like eventually as time as time goes on. But for now, I'm pretty happy with this. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I, I've talked uh, probably at this point way too much, and uh, you've had to watch through way too much just to get to this point. But we have our first town. We have our first town. More towns to come. More utilities. More cities. More stuff in general. Uh, I'm super excited about this. Uh, I'll try to make these uh, episodes, I guess. Very sort of quickly in quick succession and try to get as many out as soon as possible uh, because I've been I've been kind of low-key planning to do something like this for for quite some time now so and I should have the time the next couple of weeks to make a lot of progress so uh, like and subscribe and all that stuff I suppose uh, I'll see you next time bye guys